Hi, I'm Joel Friedlander from The Book Designer, and today I have a short lesson for you on the PICA and the PICA system of measurement. Now, if you own um, Adobe InDesign or Quark Express, or if you've ever worked with printers, then you've probably run into the PICA. The PICA is a measurement that's just used by printers. It's used for everything uh, having to do with uh, type, typography, type sizes, and uh, when we set type on a page. So how did this come about? Well, it was in the 18th century and people were trying to normalize and regularize, regularize measurement systems because they didn't invent, inherited a lot of uh, old measurement systems from the past. For instance, printing started in the late 15th century and up until the time uh, that this pica or point system was event, invented, uh, each type size was known by a name. Now, obviously, that wouldn't work very well today, where we have computers and you can generate any size you want. So, uh, in the 18th century, a type designer named Ditto invented the point system. And the point system is the origin of the pica. And his name was Ditto, and if you look at type catalogs, eventually you're going to run into his name because you'll see some very beautiful, what are called modern typefaces, known as Ditto, and there's a whole bunch of them. Um, now, for many years, printers used this pica system, and each pica was about a sixth of an inch. It wasn't quite a sixth of an inch, it was a little tiny, tiny bit less than a sixth of an inch. So if you multiplied the size of a pica by six, you would end up with something that was just a little bit less than an inch. Okay, so fast forward to the 20th century and a company named Adobe Systems. Maybe you've heard of them. Um, but Adobe created the PostScript language, and that's a way of describing pages so that printers and digital instruments can uh, create images of those pages. And PostScript uh, eventually gave us the PDF, the portable document format. And PDF and PostScript are now worldwide standards for, uh, for transferring information to printers so that they can print it on their equipment. And you can even use it for um, printing documents on your little inkjet or laser printer. Okay, so what is the PICA system? When Adobe came along, they said, okay, we've got a measurement system. It's a little bit less than a sixth of an inch, but that doesn't really help us. We need something more predictable. So they did what you could do too if you invented your own page description language and they changed the size of the PICA. And they said, okay, the pica is going to be exactly a sixth of an inch. So now if you multiply six pikas, you'll get exactly an inch, and that's much more helpful. Now, I've been talking interchangeably about points and pikas because they're both part of the same system in the same way that inches and feet are part of the same measuring system that we use here in the U.S. And the fact is, I think part of the reason we still have pikas is because Americans were so resistant to uh, taking on the metric system. You know, there was a big effort in the 60s and the 70s to get America to be, go metric. So we could use the same measuring system that's used almost in the whole rest of the world, but Americans wouldn't do it. So America and England, and in some cases Canada, are still left with uh, inches and feet and uh, pounds and ounces, old measuring systems. And I think that's part of the reason we held on to the pica, because if we had millimeters to measure printing with, it would be pretty easy. But since we only have inches, it doesn't really work so well. Now, what is a point and a pica? A pica is a sixth of an inch, so that's really pretty simple. Got to switch colors here. An inch, uh, let's represent it like that. Um, you know, you could divide it into quarters, eighths, that's what we usually do, but the pica is a sixth of an inch. So, uh, let's say one sixth and that can be further divided into 12 points so obviously if there are 12 points in each pica and six picas in each inch a point is about a 70 second of an inch or these days it's exactly a 70 second of an inch it used to be a little bit smaller now the points now we've got 72 points per inch now we can start using points to refer to type sizes. So we have 11 point type, 12 point type, 17 point type, 18 point type, and it's pretty easy to understand how you can go from one to the other. 
Now, if you wanted to go from 12 point type in the inch system, you know, that would be like one sixth of an inch to 13 point type. God, my head's just breaking thinking about how many decimals you'd have to go out to explain that. And that wouldn't work very well. Now, the other thing that we do and we use PICAS for is describing the uh, page itself that we set the type on. For instance, suppose we have a book page. I'm going to draw a tall rectangle. And uh, let's say this is a standard book, a six by nine book. So that's six inches by nine inches. And you'll notice that we still describe the page size using inches. It's only everything inside the page that we use points and picas. And this is another good thing about the PICA system. Suppose we uh, decide how big our margins are going to be and we end up, but we're going to have a line, a type line, that's um, 27 PICAs. So here's your type on your page. Let's say this is the uh, gutter here, and that means that that's where the left-hand page is, and this is the right, so this is the gutter. And um, so we've got our page set up, and we've got a line length here of 27 picas. Okay, now suppose we were still using inches. That wouldn't be too hard. 27 picas happens to be exactly four and a half inches, so that's pretty easy. You could measure four and a half inches, no problem. But suppose you wanted to make that line a little smaller. Maybe you're a designer, you say, you know, it's just a little crowded. I want to make that a little shorter. I want to make it 26 picas. 26 picas on your ruler is four and a third inches. That's pretty hard to measure with your ruler, I bet. Now, what if the designer says, no, I think that's still too long. I want to make it 25 picas long. In other words, he's gradually, our designer here is shortening the line, maybe to create a bigger margin or whatever his, whatever his design reason is. We want to give him the freedom to do that. Well, at 25 picas, you're talking about a line that's 4.16 inches long. Oh my God, you want to try and measure 4.16 inches? No, it's much easier to refer to that as a 25 pica line. Now, the last part, I'm going to show you exactly how we um, write these because there's a, a standard way to note points and picas. And um, you will see this in your software. If you use InDesign, you're going to see that, uh, let's say, if you want um, a box that's 25 and a half picas long, it's going to come out like this, 25 picas, 6 points. Now, before computers, or if you wanted to write this as an instruction to somebody, you wouldn't write it that way. You would write it like this, 25 picas, 6 points. And that would obviously be um, a little bit longer than 25, like our example before, about 4 inches, a little over 4 inches. So this is the way we annotate, like if I was going to send some instructions to somebody to set some type, I'd, I'd write it that way. And we do the same thing for when we specify type sizes. So for instance, if I want to have 11-point um, type with 14 points between each line, I'm going to write that 11 on 14. And this is going to be the type size. And that's going to be the amount of space between the lines, or what we call letting. Now, for the last thing I'm going to show you, this may be the second last thing, but that's okay. The last thing I'm going to show you is why we call uh, type by these point sizes. Now, what exactly is 11-point type? It doesn't actually tell you how big the type is. So imagine a line, and this would be the baseline that the letters sit on. So obviously we're going to have letters like A that sit right on the line, and then we're going to have letters like B, and then we're also going to have letters like G that maybe go below the line, and B obviously goes above the line. And what we have here is um, a whole bunch of measurements. We've got the X height, this is called, then we've got ascenders that go above the line, we've got descenders that go below the line. Now 12-point type means that this dimension here is 12 points. Okay, so you could set uh, lines of 12 point type 12 points apart. You couldn't set them 11 points apart because they would be banging on top of each other. So they could be 12 points. Now, if you look at this, you can realize maybe that another typeface 
Let's just shorten this up a little bit. Another typeface uh, that's also 12 point could have much larger letters um, than this typeface, but as long as you can set them 12 points apart, it's still 12 point type. So what, the, what this means is that you can have 12 point type that's bigger and 12 point type that's smaller, but it's all 12 point type. The actual design of the letter is the type designer determines how big they're going to be or how they look on that line, but it's always going to have to be 12 points apart from line to line. Now the PICA system gives us a very handy way of referring to these measurements, of making measurements, of referring to different type sizes. It's very easy to understand the difference between 11 point type and 12 point type. Anybody can understand that. It's kind of like shoes between a size 11 and a size 12. And um, that's why the PICA system has persisted. It's still very handy. It's something good to know about. And now you know about it too, where it came from and how it's used. And I hope this whole, uh, lesson has been kind of informative and helpful for you. And check back for another one. And I'm Joel Friedlander from thebookdesigner.com. Thanks for watching.